If you want to master this cybernetic assassin, you've come to the right place. Genji is one of the hardest characters in the whole game to learn, however those who become gods at Genji can pop off in almost any ranked environment. In this advanced VOD review, you're really going to learn exactly how to control that aggression so that you can guarantee picks without feeding and ultimately throwing teamfights. A Genji that can control that aggression and reel it in so that they strike at key moments won't feed and is always there to follow up with his team. So let's jump right into this Genji Advanced VOD Review so you know firsthand exactly what you need to do in order to pop off and hard carry on Genji, gaining you tons of SR. Do you want in-depth guides telling you everything you need to know to improve? Then come give our website a shot. Gameleap.com has hundreds of guides over every character in the game to ensure that you're prepared for any meta. Every single guide is made by Grandmaster players, so you get the absolute best tips and strategies out there, all in the same spot. So what are you waiting for? Come check us out in the links down below. As Genji, you really need to be looking for key opportunities in order to secure picks. Dash plus melee does 80 damage, but a single shuriken does 28, so if you do any shuriken damage on the enemy, as long as they're less than 100 health, which is 4 blocks of health, you can easily burst them down. Now one of the biggest mistakes that I also make in this ranked match is while you definitely do want to chase down staggers and get the kills, sometimes pushing up too much could definitely get you punished. I completely tunnel vision this Mora here and it actually gets me killed. Trying to dash into the enemy team with no natural cover and no teams to support me is the easiest way for me to get punished. It doesn't matter how fancy a footwork or reflect I use, I'm still gonna die here. Keep this in mind because I'm sure that this is a big mistake that you make in your ranked matches as Genji as well. The biggest difference between a Genji that really pops off and hard carries versus a Genji that just feeds is simply identifying when you can actually secure that kill. Really keep track of the health totals I mentioned. You really need to get a feel for just how aggressive you could be in order to actually secure the kill. If you pursue a character that you can never kill and die because of it, not only did you not get any value, but you also fed instead. Now let's really slow down the mechanical nuance and what was going through my head there when I went through that play against the Hanzo. Now when we engaging the point, I do realize that we do have numbers. However, I hear that there's a Hanzo above me shooting down. Even though we have definitively won this team fight, if the Hanzo is allowed to get key pickoffs onto our supports, he could easily turn the fight if he retreats with his team. This makes it my job as Genji to go up there and contest him, and I really need to zone him off or kill him as fast as possible. Now we're going to break down this section in slow motion so you can see exactly what was going through my mind when executing this play. I climb up to this high ground to contest the Hanzo, but right at this moment, I realize that the Hanzo might be able to punish me. You might be wondering, what is this Hanzo actually going to do in order to kill me? The best way to play here is in a way that is conducive to not getting punished while still trying to execute my game plan of getting him off the high ground. This Hanzo could A, try to headshot me immediately, B, ignore me and focus my teammates or C simply run away. Now if he ignores me he's simply dead and if he tries to run away I can easily punish him. The only option I'm afraid of getting punished myself is if the Hanzo tries to headshot me. If I die here then there's no one to contest the Hanzo and if he gets some follow up picks onto my supports he could easily turn the team fight solo. That being said I play around the most dangerous option which is him trying to headshot me so the second I get up to the high ground I use my reflect. But I instantly notice that he's not focusing me down so I animation cancel my reflect with a dash. This way I could easily focus him down and try to burst him down as fast as possible. With help from my team, we easily secure that kill without him getting any value in the process. Another big aspect about Genji is he can really capitalize on any plays that your teammates make. I look here and wait for my Ana to make a play, and when she gets a fat nade onto the enemy team, I easily see an opportunity to go in and get a pick. Because I can easily wall climb and my team is there, even if I don't secure a kill, I can always retreat. But luckily for me, I easily secure a kill on the Sigma, which definitely helps the team and is essentially a free pick. Now in this next fight, I'm going to show you an example of when you can dash, not necessarily to secure a kill. Based on how I dash this Reaper, I stole the mini from him, giving him no outs. Essentially what I do here is I put in damage into the Reaper, and I identify that if I steal his health pack, there's literally no way he can win that duel. Something really important on Genji is just how fast you can react to certain scenarios can definitely be a way that you get free picks. I identified that this Hanzo was shooting at me and looking at me, so I immediately flicked to him and reflect. I made this play initially just to retreat, however the Hanzo messed up and shot himself. I identify in this moment that if I dash into him, there's a chance that I can burst him down. I take this opportunity because my enemy is low and he's caught off guard to try to secure the kill on him, and while retreating, I managed to land the final blow. Now during this next stage of the fight, all I'm trying to do is build Dragon Blade. I realize that my team is severely at an ult disadvantage here, so everything I'm doing is just playing around this box while my Ana constantly heals me, 
and I'm simply trying to get Dragon Blade because Dragon Blade can be a way to win the team fight and get convincing kills. And now that my Sigma dies, which is one of my big sources of pressure, I really need to try to make a proactive play here, especially since I'm close to Dragon Blade. Now, here's another play that we're really going to break down in slow motion so you can see exactly how I execute this, what's going through my mind, and how I evaluate risk versus reward in order to get maximum impact with my Dragon Blade here. Now, the first thing that I need to identify is exactly what can stop me if I go under here. The two biggest things I'm worried about here is Sigma's accretion and Honest Sleep Dart. However, the Sigma's not paying attention to me, but the Ana's in the back line. What I want to try to do is I want to try to force the Ana to make a misplay on me by either Sleep Darting me or nading me. So what I do is I try to do as much intro damage as possible to put pressure on Ana. This is something that you really need to remember on Genji. The more pressure you put on someone, the more likely they are to make a mistake. This goes true for all matchups. As long as you put high pressure where their fear of dying is heightened, they're more likely to make a mistake. McCrees are much more likely to accidentally flashbang themselves if they think that you could kill them at a moment's notice. This puts pressure on them in order to use their CC abilities to shut you down because if they don't do it fast enough, you'll kill them before they even have a chance to use their abilities. Because I put a lot of pressure on this Ana, it actually forces her to make this misplay that allows for this play to happen in the first place. And from there, I dive back in with my Dragon Blade going all in trying to definitively win this team fight. Simple Dragon Blade mechanics from here on out get me an easy 3k and a definitive team fight win. Now looking at the time, 14 seconds left, I just want to make sure that the enemy team can't touch the point. And if they can, I want to try to use that opportunity to get picks. So I'm trying to look for staggers here or trying to look for stragglers. I see this Ana and I try to replicate the exact same play that I made before. I put a lot of pressure on her and put my reflect right into her face. Before she can actually punish me, I easily dash through her and get a free kill. Now with sizable numbers advantage and the enemy just pouring into the team, I can easily look for the isolated targets and try to focus them down. I easily focus on this Reaper and this Lucio here, definitely winning the team fight for our team and we just get to move on to the next round attack while still holding the enemy at first point. This sets us up in a really good position in order to easily win this match because all we have to do is cap the first point and we win. Now moving along to attack here, I make a big play right off the bat. The enemy team decides to play a Bastion comp and what I do here specifically actually dominates this Bastion. Firstly, I see in this right window that there's a Baptiste and I put in damage in order to bait out Immortality. After I bait out Immortality, I realize that the Bastion won't have the protection that he needs in order to stay alive, so I look for an opportunity to make a play on the Bastion. Going around this corner, I have both my Reflect and my Dash, so if worse comes to worse, I can easily use my Reflect plus my Dash to get back to my team. That being said, I can easily look for an opportunity, and if the opportunity presents itself, instead I can use these abilities to try to all in the Bastion, which is exactly what I do. After pouring in some damage to this Bastion, it's really easy for me to secure the kill on him and get out. Try to do this in every game you play. As long as you have your abilities, you can always disengage at any time. However, if an opportunity presents itself, definitely try to capitalize on it. Because sometimes if you see an opportunity to get an easy pick, it's definitely worth it. And after you confirm that kill, you get your dash back so you can easily still regroup with your team or dash to safety. Now moving on to the last stage of the fight, all I'm trying to do here is poke up for Dragon Blade. I dash through the May, but I dash towards this Mega Room because it's easy for me to get healed up and I want to get my abilities back on. Something interesting I do here is I simply dash through the whole team because as long as I touch any enemy, as long as my teammates finish them off, I get dash resets. This allows me to dash through the team rapidly. This is why in something like a dive comp, diving in as Genji could be really strong because you get more and more dashes because you don't actually have to secure the kill yourself. Your team could secure the kill as long as you did some damage to the target. Now, while there wasn't a really good example of a Dragon Blade in that video, what kind of Genji man would I be if I didn't show you how to pop off with huge Dragon Blades and hard carry your games? Let's jump in and analyze in slow motion exactly what I do in this game to pop off and have a huge 5-man Dragon Blade so that you could replicate it in your game. Now, something I found to be far more consistent when getting Nano Blades is honestly just wait for the Ana to Nano you on the ground. I can't tell the amount of times I dashed up expecting a Nano, but my Ana simply not giving it to me. While it is more efficient, yes, to dash up in the air and get the Nano midair, ultimately it doesn't matter if you get killed in the process. If you dash up expecting a nano and you simply won't get it, a lot of times you'll just die. That being said, in most of my games, I simply just ask the Ana to nano me on the ground. That additional one second more that I'd get from my nano blade by getting nano in the air is incomparable compared to actually getting the nano off in the first place. Now we're gonna break down the actual dragon blade in slow motion so you can really see exactly how I execute it here. Now when you are nano blading, there's two big things to think about. Firstly, you're not really afraid of nearly anything on the enemy team. Specific CC like Sleep Dark can definitely shut you down. However, regular CC like Flashbang can stun you, yes. However, it's still really hard to focus down a Nano Genji at all. That's the biggest difference between being Nano Bladed and being Regular Bladed. You don't have to play with as much caution because you're far more lethal and you can take a lot of damage as well. 
echoing the pressure point I made earlier in the video, the enemy McCree was under a lot of pressure and it forced him to make a mistake. Being faced down by a nanoblade is one of the highest pressure scenarios in the whole game, so your enemy team are bound to make a mistake. Go fast and go into the enemy team really quickly with intent, and the enemy players are sure to make a mistake. Even if they don't act at all, it doesn't matter because it will take you literally seconds in order to kill everybody before they even have time to react. Now right here, the easiest way to kill these two squishies is with slash and animation cancel dash. This is a simple combo with Genji that can instantly kill any 250 HP heroes or less. After I kill them, I easily turn on this Orisa and kill her as well. I see that the Ana is there and execute an easy 180, followed by a kill on the Zarya. Essentially, all while I'm getting these kills, I'm analyzing the enemy surroundings and I'm really deciding on who to go on next. With Nanoblade, the only thing that matters is speed. As long as you're fast enough, you can get away with nearly anything because of just how fast you can one-shot the enemy team. Keep this in mind when trying to execute a Nanoblade in your games. Some of the best Genji players in the world simply emphasize speed of a Nanoblade over anything else. The faster you get at executing a Nanoblade, the less likely you are to get punished and the more likely you are to have insane impact. Try practicing against bots where you have increased damage so that you can easily replicate what it's like to be either damage boosted or you have a nano blade. This way you can practice the separate mechanics when being damage boosted or nanoed while executing a blade. Now keep in mind just how fast the slash dash combo is, the enemy team will be unable to heal up the target you're trying to burst down if you do it fast enough. You can easily kill a Lucio mid-air while he's trying to execute a beat or even people standing inside Transcendence. Genji is one of my favorite characters to play in the whole game and I'm sure many of you feel the exact same way. Even when the enemy team tries to hard counter you, you can definitely still get value out of them as long as you use precise play, try to look for those game winning opportunities, and definitely try to reel in and control that aggression so you don't feed like I did at the beginning of this video. Every time you make a mistake, really try to evaluate exactly why you died in every situation. If you tried to go for an easy kill and you didn't get it, maybe your mechanics aren't honed enough and you need to practice and try free for all. Maybe you went for a kill that really wasn't realistic for you to get in the first place and maybe you need to reel back in that aggression. Definitely going over your own VODs and trying to review them yourself is one of the best ways in order to learn from each and every mistake. We all know just how hard a good Genji can carry. I'm sure in all videos you definitely made mistakes just like mine, so try to go through them and find the best way in order to counteract these mistakes and learn from them. Anyways, I hope this guide has been extremely helpful for you. Please let me know if this is something that you want to see in the future where I really break down individual plays and thought processes. So tell me which characters you would love to see and if this format is something that you like to see more of. Anyways, I'm Coach Mills and until next time. Do you want to develop yourself as a player whose skill is not only adaptable but transcends multiple metas? Don't worry, we got you covered. GameLeap.com is the only place where you'll find skills that work you from the ground up so that you can have the solid fundamental that can transition through any meta that you can come across. Not only that, but we have hundreds of videos that stem from in-depth guides to tips and tricks that can help you be prepared to dominate your ranked environment and get that sweet, sweet SR. We're so confident that our product will help you that we offer a 10-day money-back guarantee. Come check us out risk-free in the links down below.